Hey of all hunters and welcome back to another Borderlands 3 video. In today's video I'm actually going to be going over flag and how you're supposed to spec how I feel you're supposed to spec him early game all the way up to late game. Sadly this is not a build for pets. I really wish there was, but I've been toying with it and I can't find anything about it. But obviously you can always spec in, into some kind of build to just increase your fade uh, increase freight fade away damage and just do massive amount of dps so starting off after you become level two and get these two perks you're going to want to stay in the fade away tree and put five points into Vir furious attack just because after putting five points into this you actually unlock the second line but what you want to do is you want to unlock Gorillas in the Mist. This does lower the critical hit damage by 50%. But, actually, only for 8 seconds, actually. But, overall, you get to stay in Fade Away with this build for 21 seconds instead of 15 seconds. So, you won't notice that big of a difference. So, we're just going to equip that just to make sure that we have it. Uh, next thing you're going to want to do is go... And this is strictly all out DPS. You're going to want to go 5 points into Overclocked. Once you do that, you'll earn the second tree. And I'm pretty sure you can you can equip this just for now. Uh, make it so your pet taunts and gets a huge damage reduction. So we'll just equip, our, I'm sorry, equip that for now. And then after leveling even more, you want to put 3 points into Turn Tail and Run. This will just increase your DPS as far as uh, standing still with guns and increased fire rate. On top of this, which, I mean, 22% fire gun fire rate, I mean, you can't beat it. Now, this is where the build can get uh, a little bit more, if your preference. Uh, for the most part, I do put two points in the Eager to Impress, mostly because it does, or I'm sorry, not Eager to, to uh, I'm sorry, yes, Two points in the eager to impress, mostly because you get that action skill cooldown time with the um, pet uh, kills cooldown time. If the pet does land a kill, but for the most part, you're just going to be killing everything. Now, if you're finding trouble and you are dying, those two points from here can go on the self repairing system. It's all up to you guys. Uh, this is my opinion. This is how I play. I, sh I strictly go for main DPS builds and just how to do them in general. So after you put th uh, your three points in the turning tail and run and also getting your two points in the eager to impress. Oh, sorry. You're going to want to make sure you equip Gunslinger Jabber just for the movement speed that you get with every Jabber. Plus you get critical hit damage plus 5%. This is a pretty good DPS to flag. And for the most part, I think he actually gets a one flag issues attack man that Gunslinger equips a rocket launcher to the attack to attack the target. And I'm pretty sure that, yeah, he shoots with an SMG and it does pretty good damage. So after putting your five points in there, equipping your Gunslinger Jabber. You actually want to go and put two, uh, three points into Fast and Furious. This will just increase your overall gun damage and your overall movement speed, which is really nice to have. Then from here, I go two points in the Hidden Machine, mostly for the damage buff. And especially if you're in groups and you're not the one being shot at, this is really works out really well. But uh, also with the Fade Away. Uh, you might sometimes get hit by the enemies if you don't actually slightly move over a little bit. But for the most part, no enemy is going to be hitting you. But unless it's an enemy that this does AoE, you're always going to get hit. And this ability, like, seriously has, like, a second cooldown after you get hit to, you know, start focusing back up and you're able to do your overall 12% extra damage. So it's a pretty nice DPS ability to have. But... Why we put another two points in here is just to unlock a blinking eye. This makes it so your first shot of your weapon does 75% per 75% damage per hit, then it goes to 150, and then 225. 
This is an overall DPS monster. I'm blinking eye. It's really good. You want to replace, obviously, replace your not my circus uh, skill action skill augment with unblinking eye. So we're gonna put that in the second slot, and this is pretty much where we're gonna leave it as far as uh, the fadeaway skill line goes. Then from here, what you can do, and what I would do, is go uh, quickly into the blue tree and just put three three points in the persistent hunter. You get uh, increased gun damage. Sorry. Whew. That plus you get increased gun damage. Plus your action skill duration is 45% longer. Which I think with fade away it's like 7.5 seconds. So honestly with hidden machine you might need to move over a second or two while you're in fade away just to get out of an AoE. So it's a pretty overall good skill to have three points into and then after that we're just gonna quickly move into rack attack skill line uh, this one's probably my favorite tree a lot of the almost every perk you have is pretty useful but starting things off we're gonna just put five points in the stalker you get a huge DPS bonus on a hunter kill skill ability and it stacks up to three times, so you get overall 30% increased damage. Plus, if they're robot, humans, or beast, you can see down below corrosive damage, action skill damage, and movement speed. Then from there, you're going to actually want to put three points in the head count. This just makes so when you do score a critical hit, you have a 3% chance to reduce your action school cooldown by two seconds. Overall, really nice. Keeps makes it so your fadeaway stays up or keeps staying up longer and longer. And not when you're in fadeaway. I mean, when you get out, guys, come on, that would be overpowered. Uh, then from there, you actually need two more points in the go wherever you you feel like you need it. But for me, and I feel like it's the best, is leave no tra uh, trace. Put two points into this. Uh, some people actually go three. I mean, it all depends on what guns you're using. I mostly use guns that when I do land a critical hit, it basically, get, you know, it doesn't touch my clip at all. So, But there are sometimes I do run guns that don't have that skill line or skill ability in that gun. So this is just overall 20%. It will proc uh, quite a bit. Next one is Two Fang. And you're going to want to put 5 points into this. Um, Flak has a chance to fire an extra projectile per shot. And I don't know if that's per sh Now, it says per shot, but I don't know if that's every bullet that you fire you have a chance. So, like, shotguns. I'm pretty sure it's just every time out of clip from what it seems like anyways. But either way, 25% chance for to do extra damage. You can't go wrong there. Then from here, you're actually going to want to just put two points into big game. I know why two points. I'll get to that in a sec. Just in, sec in this, holy crap. In a sec, there we go, based on your gear. And then after that, you're going to want to put three points into the most dangerous game. As you can see, I actually have a class mod that gives me two more points so you can see my gun damage is a little bit higher and critical hit damage is actually pretty high too as long as well as handling and then after that you're going to want to put one point into galactic shadow which you can only put one point into and then the rest into grim, grim harvest and that will unlock this last skill tree which is megavore and this is where this build can uh, kind of be changed a little bit. If you if you are having trouble, let's say, getting critical hits, this persistent hunter line or skill that I put three points into, you can take one point out. It's still thirty percent, so it's like five percent or five seconds on the um, action skill. You can take one point out of there and just add it to Megavore. But I pretty much land all my crits and, you know, my aiming is fairly well, 
really good on this game, so I don't run it at all. But it is a really nice perk. So if you guys do want to go that route, be my guest. And also, really, this isn't that big of a deal. The only reason why I have three points into this right now is because of my class mod. And for the most part, it does give you the most DPS compared to uh, the extra 3% gun damage and 8% action skill. And then plus the big game with my 42%, 30% to compared to 20%. It's not that huge unless I were to get like a huge bonus and pretty much make it instead of 5 out of 3. It becomes maybe 7 or 8 out of 3. That is where obviously the build would change quite a bit. But this is mostly how I would run it even with... Out a class mod this is how I run it because you are getting the most DPS potential out of this class with persistent hunter at three but you know like I said at least keep try to keep two points into it three if pop three if possible are you know take one point out and just put it in here it's not that big of a deal you're doing a little bit slightly less crit, but you are actually critting bosses when some, like, spider ants are a pain in the ass to get a critical hit on. And this will probably help you. So, I mean, it's just whatever you feel is necessary. Now, going into the class mods, and this is where it gets, um, don't, don't, don't look at that. <laughs> this is where it gets, to me, I feel that people should run because as a flag running uh, Lucian's call or King's call actually both King call I actually thought I had a Queen's call my bad um, you want to find a class mod that has this ability flag has a 3% chance to activate any purchase hunt skill whenever dealing gun damage Bonus bosses are now treated as humans, beasts, robotics for flax hunt skills. This is really good, especially when you are just fighting a boss. And let's say you're, you know, a four-man group and he has a lot of, a lot of health. When you're running Lucian's call and doing a crap load of damage, or King's call, or a King's call, and you're getting all that repeat damage hitting him again. This will proc, trust me. This procs every time I fight a boss. And in this video, at the end here, I will be showing you guys Grave Ward on Mayhem 3, uh, True Vault Hunter mode. And I'm not going to check the perks. I'm just going to go right into fighting them. So I might do no damage, or I might do a crap load of damage. That's kind of what Mayhem is. Or if I wanted to, I could just switch it to you know, no Mayhem and say, oh, this build does a lot of damage, but... Mayhem mode alone gives bosses and enemies 50% more health and uh, shields and all that other crap. So this will be the f uh, the full DPS that you can actually get out of flag as of right now. Plus with a little survivability and plus if you want more or less out of these two skill lines. But the point is you're supposed to be killing enemies as fast as possible. So you don't really need survivability. And that's were you know zero flak and hell even mordecai and borderlands one you know gets their whole perk system from is be the hardest hitting character but uh we're gonna jump right into i'm probably gonna be fighting grave ward and i i know i'm gonna be fighting grave ward just to show you guys the dps that the potential and i'll point out what perks actually activated during that time and i hope you guys did do enjoy I'll be right back. Okay, so we're sliding down to Grave Lord, and pretty much he has basically been the boss for pretty much every DPS build out there. I mean, he's pretty healthy. He's pretty easy to kill. Now, this is with a King's Call, so... Just look how fast that is. This is on True Ball Hunter Mayhem 3, obviously, you can tell by the XP. Uh, my hunter skill ability did activate both of them did both the badass and I'll actually show you guys while shooting him I forget I think it one's called yeah uh, 
Stalker and the most dangerous game. They both activated in that time. Like I said, if you guys are running guns that will ricochet or do a bunch of, you know, damage as far as act big ammo clips or whatever, uh, you, the extra projectile you get, these perks will proc. Some people do run the perk that does more damage when you do uh, to enemies above 75% health. And that is good, don't get me wrong, especially against like enemies that have shields if you're using like a fire weapon. But honestly, the um, if you just being able to activate your hunter kill skill is just way better when dealing gun damage. I mean, it's, overall, it's really good to have. And obviously... I would trade, I and obviously I do have a 31% uh, pistol gut damage, so it does help. And like I said, they do help. Artifacts, right now I'm just running an artifact that increases my overall loot, loot drop, so there's no DPS there. There's no DPS bonus when it comes to shield. It's just that one class mod. So, I mean, take all that into account, guys. But, and, oh, and I forgot, I will show you what actually I did get as far as, so enemies take less damage against cryo, enemies take less damage against corrosive, enemies gain plus 40% 40, 40 weapon damage, enemies gain 20% weapon fire rate, and enemies fire two additional projectiles. So I actually didn't get a negative in this, which kind of is a little bit sad, but even if I had an incinerary, or pistol uh, damage basically my big game hunt cancels that out and I still do a crap ton of damage to him and also he does have 100% more health and I'm pretty sure shield and armor doesn't really matter but yeah guys that is the build if you guys did enjoy the video as always please like subscribe turn on notifications because I'm actually going to be posting a Moe's build that I've been falling in love with so stay tuned to that and I hope to see you in the next one Thank you very much.